there's nothing quite like the beauty of a vine ripened tomato. But these tomatoes aren't grown in a field. This is big farming, indoors, and I'm here to find out if this is the paddock of the future. I want to try and understand whether this quarter of a million square metre greenhouse complex in Victoria could be more sustainable than my backyard veggie patch. Hi Nina, lovely to meet you. Hello you Paul. Nina is one of the 350 people here turning out the perfect tomato. So how does she do it? We grow our tomatoes in rock wool slabs. This is rock wool growing media. Can't pull a little bit of the Absolutely. Hands, it feels like a sponge. Yeah. Rock wool is a fibre made from basalt rock and chalk. So here they are, nice and healthy. The perfect medium for roots to be drip fed a mixture of water and nutrients. So with that root mass, you can provide these up to 15 metre tall plants with everything they need water, nutrition. Up to six of them. Wow. So there are six trees in this slab. That's the root system. All six root systems are here. So I guess that's the advantage of doing this Hydroponic. hydroponically Absolutely. rather than in soil, that your density can, can be massively much increase. Massively, massively higher. Because this is a closed environment and plants need carbon dioxide, they have to pump it in to keep the factory working. So that's just air? Just air, oh, just pressurised air. Out. Yeah, right. Yeah. CO2 comes from those holes and goes up so the plants can uptake it. It's very important for photosynthesis. To keep a place like this at the right temperature and humidity all year round costs around half a million dollars in energy bills, or about three cents for every kilo of tomatoes. And the conveyor belt, which never stops, starts here. These plants dwarf anything you'd see in a backyard. This one's already five months old, and it's a monster. You keep following this vine, and away it goes, up it goes, up it goes, until you get to the fruit. Now, they can grow up to 15 metres in length and produce one truss of tomatoes a week. And the amazing thing is, they do that on a weekly basis. So we've got these ones ready to go next week, the week after, the week after that, and so on, right up to the flowers that are being pollinated. What a great view from up here in the canopy. There is a downside for tomatoes growing in a closed environment like this. There are no insects to pollinate them. So Nina has to help out. So we need to pollinate the open flowers. Pollination happens with the wand. Okay. I'll show you how it works. So you have to manually pollinate? We need to pollinate manually. So we've got um, male and female flower. Uh, we need to make sure that once we shake the plant, the pollen falls and sets the fruit. Have a close look. When I shake it, you will see lots of pollen coming out. Can you see this tiny little bit coming out? That's the pollen, it's oh, flooding wow. the air. Really can see that pollen just streaming out of there. And so if you didn't do that in this controlled environment, there'd be no fruit set or very no, limited? Very limited, like uh, basically zero. Right. It's not hugely labour intensive to do one plant. No. One second, but... That many plants, <laughs> that takes a while. Okay. <laughs> Do you think I could have a bit of a go? Absolutely. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Come on. I'm getting in the zone. <laughs> wow, that was a, a good one. This factory is all about efficiency, and I want to find out how one very important resource is being used. Now, I've heard that it to grow a field tomato it takes around 200 litres of water per kilo of fruit. That's a lot. We only use 12. 12, 12 litres? 12 litres. 
for one kilo of fruit. So it's a very efficient conversion it of water very into fruit. And water we don't use, we recycle, treat it again, and then we reuse it. I think I've found my job, Nina. <laughs> Do you like it? Yeah, this is good. I could definitely <laughs> be the pollinator. You're doing a good job. Good coach. Thanks, Nina. It might not feel like a very natural world. But is it a price we have to pay for feeding a growing population?